change things much in favor of the uh, front wheel drive cars either chevrolet cruise safety car leads them around and uh, right behind on the left of your picture augusto farp as we ride on all cameras in both second row cars and uh, what was that off on the side of the track? Oh, it's, it's, safety uh, safety car, car, yeah. Yeah, it's not safety car, it's the following car. So, it is Augusto Farfus with the green highlights, with the union flag highlights, Andy Prio, row one of the grid. The blue car, that is Nicola Larini. He starts in fourth place with Alex Zanardi in third. Ten laps of the Bruno circuit to go. Round 11 of Whoa. the World Touring Car Championship is underway very early indeed. One, two, three, four, five, five six, seven, breaks. eight, <laughs> nine cars wide across the track. Farfus has got a head in front. But here comes oh, Zanardi, Farfus oh, turned into the no, first no. corner, takes out two Chevrolets, and it was Prio. Oh, hell breaks loose. That was... That was Prio. That was, that was, it was into the back of him. Now, how did that happen? Well, he was into the side of him. Farfus pulled across for some reason in front of him, and that just speared off. I think it was Nicola Larini went off there. And that was all was going to happen in the first corner. And so, I'd say like a replay first, third, fourth, fifth. That's what was that? quite incredibly unnecessary. What was I saying about BMW not working as team? Oh, uh, I mean, unbelievable. Just, what is that about, guys? But look who is at the front. Yeah, Gabby. Race one winner, Zanardi. Race two winner, Tarquini, from last year. I Where they left here last year, they're right back at it. I told you about the kiss of death from the commentators. We should never have mentioned the BMWs. Look at Frio. Frio's car may make race two, but it's certainly not going to play any further part in race one. It's going to be on the back of the grid as well, because they're going to have to work in that car now. He will start from the back row the grid in the second race. There's Augusto. His chance of leading this championship is gone. We need to see a replay of that because that looked to me like for some reason Farfus turns at sharp left, but uh, was he tagged? Did somebody tag his back bumper? He wouldn't have turned sharp left for no good reason. Nope, that's for sure. Well, we have cars right behind. That's Jordi Janay. Well, he's the only Seat that is not in the top half dozen at the moment. And Coronel in the top ten as well. One of them, at any rate. Farfus cannot believe his luck. He was on for a massive point scoring weekend here. And he will Safety probably car, end though. up with nothing. Safety yeah. car is out. Alamenu and I think Nicola Larini also went off there. Well, there's no Chevrolets at all in that no. top bunch. The whole did Chevrolet even, did pack. Did Huff even escape? Let's have a happened. look again. I think the Chevrolet, one of the... Okay, so Larini top Chevrolet. Janay tearing up the outside. What's Janay with the dark colours on Something his car? Something happened behind. Why does Farfus turn sharp? left. Okay, is Let's it Zanardi behind? It, well, Prio it's, certainly it's has big behind with somebody, but what happens to... Uh, oh, I no, think he just Farfus moved over. moved across, tagged Prio, wrecked the front of Prio's car, and Huff gets sideways in the middle of the pack. I oh, know Huff's out there, so it was Menu sideways in the middle of the pillar with Zanardi. That's Farfus moves over. What, what, what was he trying to do moving over? I mean, the best place to be going into turn one is down on the white line on the right-hand side. That was a piece of stupid driving. Larini's view of it, and that was And the Huffy. Chevy's all jump off. Well, Menu survived, but then got tagged sideways in the middle with Jörg Muller. In front of us, Hernandez, Daste on the grass. That is Menu recovering. Oh, Jörg no, no, tries to go inside. Yeah. Menu gets hit again by a Coronel. No, there, was, there was a problem with the back of Menu's car. You yeah. can see he couldn't steer it. There's a broken um, left rear suspension. Roberto Ravaglia cannot believe it. I tell you what, if that was his reaction, imagine what Bart Mampai of RBM... That's Andy Prio still trying to drag this car back round to... Um, and it, and to imagine what Charlie Lamb's face looked like when he saw his pole sitter, the man who should lead the championship going away from here, off in the first corner. That was the silly... I, I just... I don't understand what he was thinking about. He should not have been trying to pull left. If anything, you'd be pulling right. That car looks like it's going to struggle to um, make race two, unless they can flatbed that car out of there. Well, we may well have to because there's a lot of metal work in that gravel trap. Uh, Rob Huff's car being towed away, so that will go to the garage. That menu coming back around. It. Yeah. Yeah, that's Alain coming around. But it looks like he either has a puncture on the left rear or a broken or a suspension. Broken suspension yeah, there's Nick. Nick Larini is out of his car. Prio is back. Tell you what, I'm not sure I'm going to talk to him until we get to Porto. I don't think he'll be a happy I, party. I, I think Farfus and Prio will be having a quiet word with each other here. I'm not sure it'll be that quiet. Uh, oh, okay, well, we're going to try and get a word with Augusto. I don't think it's going to be a pleasant I word. Augusto watch, moves over. over. I mean, that was... My only question there was, did it, it was it a concertina effect? Did Zanardi no, get hit from no, behind no, 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 into no. the back it, of it somebody? He, he, but he, I don't he didn't touch so. him. He, he right. moved. What he was thinking about moving left, he was trying to block Andy rather than worrying about his own line. 
Look how muddy it is there on the outfield. That's how wet it's been in the last couple of days. See the bike comes tire, in. The bike tire down in Alan Menu's car there, see that? Yeah. It's, he's obviously is it just tight. the tire or is yeah, the no, rear of line as well? I think it's probably got a little bit of damage on the rear because somebody's pinballed it there. There's Bart Mampai looking at Andy Prio's car and surprisingly Augusto Farfus doesn't want a word with us. Well, gee, no. there's a I, I think the, the, what they're trying to do, I would think they're trying to keep uh, Andy Prio and Augusto Farfus apart at the moment. I think they might be separating Augusto from any sharp objects actually in the garage because I'm not entirely sure that he's not about to really beat himself up. Just watch this again. There's no good reason no. why he goes left. That, for me, is just the silliest move of the day, of the weekend. Well, now, he is seeing Tarquini howling up the outside in his mirrors and miscalculated entirely any the, gap to He Prio. had the inside track. He had the inside, which is exactly where you'd want to be. You wouldn't want to be out on the outside. You're out on the outside, the boat on the inside slides across and tags you. It is not the place to be. He should have been down the white line here, right on the white line, where Andy is, That's or where the Nazi is. Oh, is that Muller's view or Cornell's? Muller's, maybe. And Alex is up there, right? Well, yeah, Alex Muller's. is second, though, isn't he? Uh, yeah, Zanardi second, Tarquini leads, and just carnage of an uh, unimaginably uh, bad manner. Well, for Chevrolet, but for BMW particularly, I mean, Chevrolet didn't look or didn't think they looked like they had a lot of point potential here, but BMW certainly did, and that's... But the Chevrolets were just incredible. completely... Um, they were completely... Oh, they, they had nowhere to they go. They were just passengers, yeah, really. Absolutely. There was absolutely nowhere for them to go. I mean, <laughs> I just cannot believe that that happened. Look at this. They're, stay on the white line. Stay on the white line. No, we go left. Well, uh, and Alex, I... Alex must think it's Christmas. He's down there. Uh, Gab Gabrielle is right around the outside laughing his socks off. And Alex is second. Alex is going to win this, uh, this restart. No argument. Look at Gabrielli coming around the outside. How Tarquini does not get thumped off here. He must have missed it by a fraction. You know, I bet he almost left paint on the back bumper of Tarquini's car. But you but can see how the two Chevrolets are just innocent bystanders yeah. and get completely wiped out. And didn't he hit Lorini's car hard? That yeah. was a big hit. Lorini's car up in the air as he got the impact. See, what they need to do here uh, with uh, La Menu's car is get it back out quickly. Mm. Find out. He can go back out now. Find out if the car's okay. If it's not, he can come back in and fiddle around with it. He's at the back of this grid anyway, minus a few feet. Farfus, I suspect that car, that's it for the day now, because unless they can get that back, they're not going to have a time to uh, get it repaired before the second race. Menu's car is in the yeah, Huff is walking back. That's broken a rear yeah. trailing arm on that Chevrolet. That's why probably when it hit the wheel, it's punctured the tire, but it's also um, ripped out a trailing arm. Job one here is, John, is to rip everything out to find out what's left in one piece and how far everything's been pushed back. See actually whether you can rebuild it because you've got to do things like mount the radiator so that the engine's not punching holes in it as soon as you try and run. So. Yeah, these guys are professional at that and they know they've only got a short time to, to get the cars between races. They've only got 50 minutes of working time. I think the interesting thing when the restart here is Alex Zanardi has got clearly a faster car. The BMW is faster than the Seat this weekend. No problem. We'll just wait and see exactly what happens at the restart. And I think Gabri uh, Gabrielli could get jumped quite quickly. Zanardi needs to get away because he's got a fan ruler in third place from 14th on, from 13th on the grid. Unbelievable. We could end up here with a one uh, BMW first and then Seat second, third, fourth and fifth. The guys at Seat must be laughing their socks off. BMW cannot get their act together. They can't work as a team. They can't stop crashing into each other. The best factory BMW driver, Alex Zanardi, in second. The next best one is his teammate Sergio Hernandez in sixth. And in third, BMW factory driver, Jörg Muller is 11th. So it's not exactly reflecting of their pace or the way they lined up on the grid. But you know what? I actually worry a little bit for how Christian Polson got tagged by somebody there as well. He's in the pit lane in the... Uh, We're about to go. The safety car lights are out. The safety car is coming in this lap. I have to say, so. I worry for Alex Zanardi. Don't forget how well the Seats work as a team. He's got one in front and three behind, yeah. and they're not going to shuffle their way but by him. He's a big boy. He can cope with all of that. And if, what he get, needs to do is very, very quickly get past Gabriele Tarquini. Mm. Otherwise... 
the three behind are going to be chewing away at his back bumper. Here we go, restarting. Go, go, go. Let's go. Lap three completed of now 12 laps, it should be the race distance. Gabriele Tarquini leads. Here comes Alex Zanardi, looking for a move immediately down the inside. Ivan Muller third, Ricard Rydell fourth, Chaga Montero fifth. Next BMW, Sergio Hernandez in sixth. Tarquini gets the door closed, and Ivan is coming with a head of steam behind Alex Zanardi. He is on his own for BMW. It's him or no one because there are four of the five turbo diesel stats all around him. He really is right in the middle of the Hornets' nest, got, isn't he? Sort of Billy no mates, really, and he, this is a good good move, Alex, if you can pull this one off. Yes. Okay, so race one winner, Alex Zanardi from last year. Lee's Roberto Rovaglia breathes a momentary sigh of relief. And Ivan Muller gets through as well. Yes, Tarquini was offline, picked up a little bit of dirt. Muller always the hunter killer, straight by. Uh, teammate, rival, enemy, doesn't make any difference. Ivan is up into second. Gabrielli defending Gabrielli trying third. to come back past him again. Yeah, because yeah, he's got Rydell and Montero right behind. And there is Jörg Muller trying to go by Felix Portero. Portero will let him go, despite the fact that Tom Carnell Seat is in front. Stefano Daste's yellow and white BMW is the top independent. Daste is seventh. Coronel is eighth. That's, at the moment, pole for race two for Tim Top Tom Coronel. Where have we seen that before? And if it rains, my goodness, for race two, we'd be back to the same place as we were in Japan. And then, uh, uh, Zanardi has just pulled out a five-car uh, five lead there just now. Um, Fastest man on the track at the moment though is Sergio Hernandez, his teammate. So the two Roal Motorsport BMW Italia Spain cars are going well. And in front of Hernandez, lots of tire smoke from one of the Seats through the corner there. So somebody might have had a little rub. Might have been Ivan, Ricard, not sure who. I think these guys now will look at the train. It's just it's a fantastic sight to see these four cars nose to tail. You think they're connected by bits of string. But what do you call it? Zanardi has now got this four or five car buffer. He needs to just, and he's very capable of doing it, head down, concentrate, and this race is his to lose. He's got it. No better track for him to be at, to, to be in front than this track. This is absolutely his chance of the season. Of course, he won his first ever race at Oschersleben. We've still got to go back there this year. But this was his real highlight of his World Touring Car career so far. And look at the Seats. Rickard Rydell sort of trying yeah. to buff off uh, Montero. Montero's looking quite strong this weekend. Yes, he is. And uh, Rickard might get the phone call soon. But, of course, they've got to keep Sergio Hernandez back. They want those points behind Hernandez. White BMW is Stefano Daste in seven then Jörg Muller in eighth ahead of Tom Coronel, who's second independent in his Seat Holland car. And Jörg Muller just set fastest lap of the race so far, so that car's clearly on the up. Ricard attacks Gabrielli, looking back there from Ivan Muller at Tarquini's car, and there's oh, Montero, touch. Montero going inside Ricard. Ricard had a lunge, lost ground, Thiago tried to get by, now four BMWs or three BMWs behind him, and in fact, five BMWs in the next six cars. But John, when you're trying to follow four cars like the Seats are there, it's like trying to pass a queue of caravans on a road. They're all just one solid lump. Jörg Muller gets to the front of the queue. And when they're all underneath the back wings of each other, you really can't see too much. So you've just got to be... Daste shuffled off wide. Coronel leads the independence class. Daste on the grass, gets back, back on in front Coronel. of Coronel. How did that work? Well, that was Tom going through and Tim picks up a place as well. But Jörg Muller is, is on a flyer. He's, he's set fastest lap there, and nearly a second a lap faster than everyone else. Trouble is now, he's got to get himself past Dasty, and then right in among the pack. Dasty's gone, he's off already, he was uh, eased off uh, in the battle with Coronel, so Jörg now has four sats between him and second place. And with a disappointment for Farfus, incidentally, uh, Farfus's team manager has been summoned to the race control, so Charlie Lamb, it won't actually be him, it'll be his brother Dieter who goes up to talk to uh, race control. And that obviously is for triggering that first corner shunt, because there's no question, Augusto, despite being the pole man, did kick it all off. And that's a very bizarre concept, the pole man starts the first corner shunt, almost never happens. Well, actually, what they wanted there was that they also wanted their Jody Genese team manager, so mm -hmm. they maybe oh, you're right car four yeah. yes oh well huge yeah. jump start yeah. I th i'm thinking for Jordan. Janae, because he's obviously oh, right. gone from sort of 12 13th on the grid 
straight up, and that was a jump start, I would think, but yeah. we'll wait and see. Well, he'd made up about three rows of the grid before he got to the start line. Zanardi's just done fastest lap of the race now, so he's got his head down, clear track. He's not even looking in the mirrors. These yellow cars behind are beating the living daylights out of each other, and they've got to just be uh, be careful. Independence category, there is Coronel in the middle, sandwiched by the two BMWs, and it's Portero with the, Ita with the uh, Spanish colours and Postiglione with the Italian colours in the two pro team BMWs. They are first and third. Tom Coronel still second. Second in the Indies, Tim is fourth in the Indies behind the identical car. Fifth is Ensler, sixth is Daste recovering from his off. So Montero and Muller, fifth and sixth, are the quickest men on the circuit at the moment. Here comes Jim Muller down the inside of Thiago Montero. He's been pushing the Portuguese along and he moves in front. So that is him up to fifth position. So now they've broken the dam. And, and John, this is the only way, picking them off one by one. You can't get them all in one no, queue. He won't get them all in one, but he's clearly got a car that's capable. He's, he's set in really good sector times, fastest sector times so far. He's got a one by one, just pluck them off and just move up. He's got his real angry head on right now. Best BMW, but he's not going to get near Zanardi. Zanardi's gone. He's in another race. And this is like Alex Zanardi coming back up through the field in race two last year, cutting his way through the traffic just so quickly. Jörg clearly has got more speed through the corners, and here the corners are long enough and wide enough actually to be able to pass. Janae in the pit lane. Yeah, it looks like he might be in for a stop go penalty. Who knows? Well, it hasn't been notified, no, so uh, maybe something else. Some of the phone him and said, look, you've been a bad boy, you better get in here. It's his second pit stop, so he's already a lap behind, so he may have had to pick up a tyre uh, after the start. See, what, from Muller's point of view, Jörg Muller's point of view now, who are on board with him, you've got to get past immediately. You can't sit behind these blokes. That is Rydell, right up behind Ivan, and Tarquini was, uh, Tarquini's gone by, now we didn't spot that. Tarquini went by Ivan somewhere, so Muller's still struggling. Here comes the other Muller, Jörg Muller, no relation of course. See and how the, got a the little, yeah. just pulls a couple of car lanes out there, and that, that mid-range torque just out of the corner. Well there is Montero, and around the outside, Hernandez went around the outside of Muller and Montero, so Muller lost ground, drifting out wide there at the end of the uh, final corner. It's up the hill towards that final series of, of S's there, that, um, that Jörg Muller lost out. Now what he's going to do is concentrate on these corners all the way down to the base of the valley, and try and get down the inside, here comes Montero again trying to attack Hernandez to move back up the order. Zanardi leads, Tarquini second, Ivarmola third at the line, but now down to sixth position. So Ivarmola really struggling. He's at the back of the queue, and there he moves out of the line again. And look, the BMW is just hoarding all over the back of these Seats. Montero under pressure from Hernandez. Felix Portero, the top independent, with the fastest race lap and in front of the world champion. So Ivan Muller being shuffled back out of the points in a moment. This is Ivan running wide. John, he's really struggling. He's yeah, struggled a problem with the all weekend. Yeah, I think the, the, tr the trouble is that Cal doesn't have any front end grip at all for some obscure reason, but he's just gone backwards. Well, Jörg Muller on board behind Felix Paul, uh, Thiago Montero, rather. Still, there's uh, Jaime Pucci, and he is worrying about his world champion. Don't forget, although Farfus probably will not score, if Ivan doesn't, he still only has a three-point lead at the end of this race weekend. Yeah. And at the moment, Ivan's car is not a point-scoring car. Look, the independent say to Tom Coronel is hassling to get by him now to get into the points. And Gabriele Tacquini in second place is going to pick up a handful of points here. He's probably the danger man as far as Ivan Muller's concerned right now. But for instance, I don't know what happened to Jörg Muller then. He, was, he had the pace, all of a sudden he's just gone backwards. He's let Montiero back past him again. He needs to get his act together and get on with it. Again, he's running quick up the hill. It was onto the straight. He drifted right out wide, tail got out sideways, and that robs him of speed. And so the other two behind just went straight by. Looking back at Tom Coronel, this is from Ivan Muller. And Coronel trying to get into the points again. Don't forget that really pays dividends in the Independence Trophy as well, because you multiply any full championship points you score by three and add them to the Independence points you score. Rob Huff's car back in the pit lane, finally. Zanardi, Tarquini, Rydell, Hernandez, the top BMW, uh, or the second BMW in fourth, then Montero. And all that tyre smoke is pouring off Ivar Muller's front tyres. That's who was smoking even as early as lap one or two. As he turns into the first corner, John, it wreaths of smoke coming off the tyre. He did say that he couldn't get uh, heat into the front tyres. They've obviously put 
a little bit too much toe on the car or a little bit too much camber. The car just doesn't seem to have the front end turn in that the others have got for some reason, which is unlike a van. Inside him goes Jörg Muller, so he, uh, inside Thiago Montero goes Jörg Muller, yes, well, well used bit of inside linery and Montero trying to come back downhill, everything's quick Plenty downhill. of forcing there. Yeah, and here comes Portero, again Montero really locking up there, that's a difficult downhill, slightly off camber braking area, front wheel drive tyres don't like that much do they? No, not really, it's, um, I'm, I'm just amazed that uh, Jörg Muller's on the pace, then he's off the pace. What's happening? Why is he not sort of getting right back on the back bumper of the car in front? Well, he did immediately bridge bridge the gap once he got past the first set, left right up to the next group, but you're right. Uh, the last couple of laps, he has just not been able to quite hold that front running pace. He seems to get to a point, you know, he's fast and then he seems to lose his head somewhere in there, but he's just set a very fast sector time in the first sector. Maybe he's got, he's got his clean head back on again. Look at the independents, Portero for BMW, then Tom and Tim Coronel, between them Vito Postiglieni for BMW and Prio's car, look at that, almost showroom looks, spec. Looks pristine, they're sending him out to make sure that car's okay, make sure it's good for the next race, but he's going to start way back at the tail of the grid for this one. Well, 18 cars running at the moment, Marin Colax just made a pit stop, and there's Tarquini and Rydell ahead of Hernandez and Muller, so Tarquini, Rydell, the second and third, Hernandez and Muller, fourth and fifth. We might still get a BMW whitewash at the podium, but not the cars we were thinking early. No, but you, you see, Van Muller's got to be really careful here. He doesn't get bumped because in the eight, he's in eighth place yeah. as we speak. If he loses another place to, say, Tom Coronel, then he starts further back on the grid. He's going to start ninth on the grid. Where if he stays where he is, with the reverse grid for the second race, he can start on pole position. It's really important. In our commentary box, John, above the pit straight on the far side from the pits, I can smell no, tire smoke. Yeah. Well, that's incredible, and that is how bad Ivan's handling problem is. We've got another three laps after this. I think it's almost inconceivable that if Tom Coronel doesn't get by him, that Vito Postiglione won't. And he's got Franz Ensler coming up as well. Somebody will get past Ivan for the final uh, point and for the reverse grid pole position. So we've got Jörg Müller seems to be moving ahead again. Mm. Well, they're now, here they are now, the two BMWs, Jörg Müller and Hernandez, all over the back of Rydell, and in front of him, Tarquini is second. Don't forget, second and third, those two sets, and here comes Jörg, pushing Ricard, just, look, Ricard's tyre off the ground there and locked up under braking, just enough to get a little nose alongside, not quite enough, but if he, he keeps his nose clean here, he's got he to attack him nose. up the hill. He Ricard just, drifts off line. push Ricard enough to lose the grip. You get off, off line, you get on the loose stuff on the marbles, you lose all the momentum that was that was a good bit of overtaking without changing paint and of course right behind Sergio Hernandez also looking to do the same then the next BMW Felix Portero he's in seventh trying to get ahead of Chaga Montero and this is for pole that little group just there for pole in race two Tim Coronel ahead of Franz Engsler Jan van Lagen 13th position ahead of Tom Boardman so van Lagen is actually the eighth factory car on the track there are so many independents we talked about this in qualifying john it is a factor that there are so many good quick drivers and good quick cars in the independence category actually it's by no means certain that factory drivers will even fill the points no it's not i mean it's capable of a, a an, in, an independent getting right in amongst the factory cars that's the way this championship seems to work and you can see that from the positions at the moment yeah but we've got Jörg Müller is just about to have a go and if he does the same to Gabrielli as he did to um, to Rydell and Gabrielli's a little bit tougher character however that was an easy pass well Gabrielli knew the writing was on the wall then you, he, you can see the tyre smoke from yeah. his car if we can smell it up here he can certainly smell it down there he knows that if you gets a run he's going by he's got him back again that's uh, well downhill left-hander he'll have the inside line but will he be able to stop no he doesn't think so either <laughs> Gabriel is maybe figuring out that third place is better than nothing at all here because he's got his teammate Rick out behind him well what's he going to be asking his engineer where's Ivan where's Ivan how many points has Ivan got Ivan's got one possibly none third is better than nothing 
win for Gabrielli. A lot better than nothing. It puts him right back in touch. 11 behind at the beginning of this race. Six points here makes half that gap. But Ricard has got to be very careful now because he has a BMW of Hernandez right on his boot mm -hmm. lid. And it looks that, like now that the Seat's 10 laps into his 12 lap race are struggling a little bit with the front tyres. And they're uh, some cars worse than others. And I'd be surprised if Tom Coronel doesn't manage to gobble up uh, Ivan Muller here. Tom's real problem, of course, is that he does slightly rely on, on the Seat factory team selling him the parts to keep his car running and it has been known several times in the past that he's been asked to move over from a point scoring position to allow the factory cars through but they really have to let the independents race because of course they those guys are paying their own money to race against bmws and coronel would desperately love to get by ivan and shake off Vito postiglioni the danger for ivan is it that somehow Coronel gets alongside, Postiglione's BMW is going straight by Ivan Muller as well. Ivan Muller's lap time is one second a lap slower than the fastest lap, which is Jörg Muller in third place at the moment. But he's also the slowest of all of the Seas. Mm. This guy, there's something wrong this weekend with Ivan's car, the setup. Well, it's not Ivan in my view, Ivan is very capable of dragging it home with three wheels on it. But yeah. it's just something not right this weekend, that he is under pressure. And I think you're right. Tom Coronel looks as we have, has the pace to pass him, but I'm sure the radio calls we made, Tom, sit still, fend off the BMW. Fastest race lap for Andy Prio, 2 minutes 10.6, the previous fastest lap, 2 minutes 12. Yeah, but they're throwing tyres on the car. But it means that it will go quickly in race 2. Oh. Now, he might not start inside the top 20, but... He will have a fire lit under him like we've seldom seen. He will set, He will start inside the top 20 because the Chevrolets haven't come back out yet. Yep. And the number of other competitors that got pushed off, Jenny and so on and so forth. So I think Prio could, could probably end up s mm, 17th or 18th in this second race. And um, given us what we said before, BMW like this track, you could probably see Andy get himself up at the top. Half a dozen, maybe. It might just happen. I tell you what, it's certainly worth watching his on board. Tarquini second, Rydell, uh, sorry, third and fourth. They, these two say outs are Tarquini third, Rydell fourth. Acting as rear gunner there, fanning out to deny Hernandez BMW a chance to get by. And not sure that Sergio has got the touring car experience yet to really mix it with, with the likes with of the Tarquini best. and Rydell, who've got 15 years of this skullduggery under their belts. They know the tricks. They don't have to think about them it's just instinctive here to be able to defend and hold on to these positions yeah all that downhill stretch is where the bmw can score can take advantage but then the uphill stretch is where the the seats just pull away and you just can't get near them rickard doing a bit of covering there to make sure that uh, hernandez doesn't get near him yeah too wide makes it very hard for hernandez to find a way he has to try and find a way past both of them or really pluck up the courage to stick his nose in where it's not wanted for terror behind i think he's probably less worried about that he's leaving the independence category but he is really in full giant killing mode this season lost a factory drive last year to hernandez for reasons that obviously bmw are party to and the rest of us are he wasn't best pleased and now as an independent he has been in the in the overall points pretty much every time he's been out he really is electrifying to watch we haven't seen the um as we watch andy frio here sort of potting around at the back really setting fastest laps all mm -hmm. here but he's on his own we've not seen zanardi and muller for a minute or two but Muller has taken chunks out of Zanardi's lead. It's now down to half a second with yeah. one lap to go. Yes, and so I wonder. Is on a stormer. I wonder whether Zanardi will end up winning this, or will he be like Tarquini, defending from a quick BMW into the final couple of corners as Gabrielli did at the end of race two last year? Tarquini third onto the final lap ahead of Rydell, Hernandez, Top Indy is Portero, Ivan Muller. I'm pretty certain will hold on to eighth place and start race two from pole but will likely still reverse backwards through the field. That car does not work. They've obviously, uh, Robert Ravalia has obviously radioed Zanardi and said, get your finger out, Muller's catching you here, get on with it. Well, they both just set their fastest race lap, each of them on the penultimate lap of the race, but Jörg half a second behind, bearing in mind what happened to Augusto and Andy 
is he really going to have a last lap lunge? Will he take second place? My thinking is yes, he will take the points and sit behind Alex to the line because let's face it, there will be enough backside kicking going on from Dr. Mario Tyson come Monday morning. I don't think Ivan particularly wants to be sitting outside his study for his turn with the cane. No, I, I think that, um, no, you mean Jörg Müller, not Ivan Müller. If, if, if sorry, Ivan yes. Müller ended up in front of Mario Tyson, that might be a real problem. <laughs> yeah, no, I know what you mean, but I, th I think that uh, Tyson's going to have to have a discussion with these blokes because that was the silliest piece of uh, blocking I think I've ever seen. So here we go, this is the battle for ninth place, second in the independence. We're looking back from Ivan Muller, Tom Coronel. The real danger for Com Tom Coronel is he's got Postiglioni all over his back bumper. He's trying to hang on to second in the independence category and to try and uh, at least limit the damage that Portero is doing to his two-point championship lead. But he's got Ivan Muller blocking him in front and he can't get by and he's losing ground. Final corners then for Alex Zanardi. Jörg Muller, you can see he's settled for second place yeah. now. He's just come yeah. off it. He is going to finish in second. Alex Zanardi is going to win again in Bruno. That's three uh, races and two wins here for Alex Zanardi. The crowd rise happy. to their feet. Yes, I'll everybody likes when Alex wins. Jörg Muller in second, third Tarquini, fourth. Rydell, yes, just ahead of Hernandez and Portero rushing to the line. I mean, Vito, Vito Postiglione, but it is Coronel that takes second in the independence category. However, Ivan Muller did hang on to eighth place. Team manager and driver of car number eight to report to race control. That would be Augusto Farfus. And, uh, well, either Charlie Lamb or his brother. And again, look at the hand controls. That ring, that's the throttle. Normally, Alex uses his left hand to operate the throttle, his right hand on the gear shift, and uh, obviously steering with both hands. So, again, I think, Sorry, I was going to so, say, I think Alex would like to have the entire World Championship held here at Bruno. <laughs> oh, absolutely. He'd be multiple world champion. Roberto Grano, who won here on the fearsome old... 16 kilometer circuit or whatever it was many times he phones the news home and look how happy the bmw italia spain boys are they've got to come here hoping for success and they've had it already this one Gabriele Tarquini comes out onto the podium in third place and with a good points haul, particularly with the uh, championship leader only scoring one. Second place for Jörg Müller and victory as last year here in race one for Alex Zanardi. Well, the crowd certainly cheering him. And a very popular winner, Alex, here last year, and doesn't seem to have lost any of the shine either in 2009. Joining them on the podium, a third BMW driver, Felix Portero, there on the left, the top independent. So we'll have the Italian anthem for our winning driver, the German anthem for our winning constructor. So Alex Zanardi celebrating victory here in the background, the noise of the Formula 2 cars running in and out through the pit lane. As the uh, trophy for third place is awarded to Gabriele Tarquini of Seat Sport. Trophy for second place from the CEO of the circuit, Ivana Ormanova to Jörg Müller and our race winner how many years is this going to go on then the uh, chair of the Czech parliament Miroslav Vicek presents the trophy to Alex Zanardi this is for you boys it is a small tight-knit family and the Yokohama Independence Trophy Award 
presented by their GM for Poland to Felix Portero. Again, Felix just extending his, uh, or retaking rather, the championship lead from Tom. Or oh, will he? No, 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 he won't be. They'll be tied at the top as Tom was second in the Indies category. And for the manufacturer, the trophy goes to BMW, winning manufacturer in the overall classification. Alex Zanardi with those Italian colored boots, red, white, and green, the Italian Tricolore. Moments to savor.